Hey, good morning guys. I finished the ice base, it looks so cool. And I've also finished the Mephitic Blight Hauler. Cannot wait to show that off. And also this week there have been so many drops of uh, rules and data sheets for 10th edition. I've downloaded the one for the Mephitic Blight Hauler, so there's like a few things I want to talk about today. Uh, first the ice base, I was taking photos of the whole process, so I'll take you guys kind of like through that step by step in terms of how I created it and what it looks like now. It is definitely uh, the centerpiece of my army at the moment, uh, not that my army is very big. Then I'll show you the mini, which I think just turned out amazing. And then after that I figured um, we'll jump into the data sheet and see, try and understand what this unit actually does because I've, uh, I, I, I took a little glance at it um, and some of it makes sense to me, some of it doesn't, but uh, yeah, let's, let's jump into it. Okay, so let's start talking about this ice base. If you guys saw my last video, you would have seen that I picked up uh, UV resin and uh, also uh, this blue stuff. So I have been playing around with that and making a few kind of um, like ice shards, which I've been attaching to actually not just the uh, mythic, mythic black corner, but also uh, some of my Plague Marine models. And I think they look really good. I've got a couple of small crystals here. Um, not sure how well you guys will be able to see that there. Uh, but I'll put pictures up on the screen like I always do and so yeah it was a uh, the the blue stuff was pretty easy to kind of get my head around all you had to do essentially was just put it in hot water for three minutes then you could mush it up and use these uh, use rocks to like make these indents uh, then use the UV resin to fill it up and just put it in the sun essentially and then that was it so super easy to use I did remold this once because I, the first time I did it, I made the big ones for uh, the MBH. I think, yep, I got that right. <laughs> uh, and then the second time I did it for um, to make smaller ones for uh, my Plague Marines. Now, the second time I did it, I, I was using a plastic cup. So I put the hot water in a plastic cup, I put this in it, and it did stick to the sides a bit. So I did lose a little bit of it. I did manage to, to save some of it from the plastic cup, but uh, although this is reusable, I, I think there is a limit to how many times you can use it if um, you take into consideration that you're going to be losing a little bit uh, each and every time. Now, once I... Uh, sorry, I've, I've got the photos up on here as well, just so I kind of remember what I'm talking about. Uh, so once I made those uh, the, the ice crystals, I, um, I, I had a base, I painted it blue, uh, a few different shades of blue, I used turquoise on there as well and super glued the, the ice uh, fragments to it and from there um, oh yeah I used the, the resin and put like a thin layer of that across the whole base and put that in the sun it, it turned out really good and was super easy to use this next part was a tip that I got from a YouTube video where they, they used a, a crafting knife to um, just cut like scratches in the top of the resin once it had hardened to kind of uh, create that effect that it's uh, it's like a sheet of ice over over some form of water and it, it looks good it looks cool I, I think um, from what I learned from doing this is the more scratches you put on it the, the better it looks the more ice like it looks and uh, what was this one? Oh yeah yeah so once I had done that I then dry brushed uh, all of the rocks uh, just with white to, to kind of give them that that more of a frosted look uh, as opposed to just you know being crystal clear and then after that I uh, put put some of that snow that I've been using over top of it and uh, yeah that was essentially the process so I've got I've got them here for you but um we'll once I've done all this uh, setup I'll um I'll show you guys some close-ups but he just looks so cool. After that, I just um, glued him on here. And he just stands out so much from the rest of uh, the team because like these other ones I've been doing, you know, there's a, a lot of snow on here and it's white, but because there's so much vibrant blue that also uh, you can see on here, it just really stands out. And being able to see that blue uh, underneath um, these resin ice crystals, so good. But anyway, we'll um, we'll jump into that and uh, take a closer look at it. All right, guys, here he is, the Mephitic Light Hauler. Let me do a, a little spin around, and then uh, we'll start talking about it. But look how vibrant and colourful that snow base is. 
I think it came out great. There we go, here he is. The, the current uh, centerpiece of my army. So you can see here that I've gone for, um, I've just gone for pretty much the same color scheme that I, I've been using across my army. Now, <laughs> for those of you, if it's your first time here, you may be wondering uh, what this 100 is. So yeah, this model was actually a gift um, for hitting a milestone on YouTube. Um, my, my fiance got me this for uh, getting my first 100 subscribers and um, so I, I put the 100 on here just so, you know, as a little reminder um, as to how I got this. And just talking about it, like, I did a couple of practice ones writing that 100 on a piece of paper with the paintbrush before I did it on here, but it turned out fairly tidy, like I'm, I'm super happy with it, it looks clean. It was one of those things where it's like, if I stuff it up, it's just going to look so bad. So I made sure to be really, try and be as careful as I could be with it. But I think it turned out really nice and it's really easy to read, which is cool. Okay, um, some of the highlights on, on this guy. So the missiles, uh, added a bit of color there. I've gone for red with, um, I put some orange and then some yellow on the tips there. I'm not sure how well you can see the eye there, but... There are a few different shades of blue on there. I tried to make it look like a lens. Uh, again, it kind of does. Kind of doesn't. Similar, similar to my Plague Marines, you know? <laughs> uh, and then if we turn this around a little bit for the body, I just went for like a, a dark gray and then uh, dry brushed it to, with white to pick out some of those details. I've been using that gray uh, I can't remember what it's called, it's like basil basilicum grey or something like that, it's like a contrast paint and it's probably my most used paint at the moment because I've been doing it over top of uh, all these metallic areas that I've been painting as well and it just really darkens them and makes them a bit grungier and adds so much character to it as well. For the little cracks and dents all over the body I've uh, been filling them with a bit of uh, Nuln oil uh, which, makes, which has made them pop a bit which is cool. Uh, I think I, on a couple of the areas I did put a little bit of a streak, you can see over here. You can also see that I've um, kind of made these like dashes across on these like armor areas. And I guess for me, like I don't know if this is like a robot, a machine or like a living kind of like being. I, I mean, I guess it's like half and half. And so when I was thinking of the armor here, I wanted to make it kind of feel more organic, which is kind of why I put those those lines across it, um, just to try and make it feel more like a shell as opposed to armor. Uh, and then for the teeth, I just went for um, the same bone color that I've been uh, doing for my Plague Marines. Let me just grab one of these real quick. You can see here that the brown to the white, uh, which I've been doing on the teeth here and up on the bone, oops, up on the bone areas up the top here. Cool, but yeah, I mean the stand-up thing for this one I think really is the base. I'm so happy with how it turned out. Like, it just looks so cool. No pun intended, right? But yeah, what do you guys think? First uh, vehicle, I think it's a vehicle, uh, in my army. I think you can run these in units as well, so it will be cool to have a few of these uh, lined up next to each other one day. From what I've seen, I think these, uh, obviously the new rules aren't out yet, but uh, sorry, the point cost, but this was about 140 points. So it makes up about a quarter of my army. And uh, yeah, so I don't think I'll be getting any more of these anytime soon, but it's, uh, I'm so happy with how this turned out. It looks so amazing. I'll just do one more turn and uh, then we'll jump back into um, the, the data sheet and see or find out what this guy uh, can actually do. Okay, so I've got the data sheet card, I think that's what they're called, uh, up here in front of me. And uh, I, <laughs> let's just jump into it and and, and take, a, take a look at this. Okay, so Mephitic Blight Haulers. Movement 10, that's, that's pretty straightforward. Toughness nine, yep, okay, that's, um, I understand that. I don't know what SV is. Is that like a save value or something like that? I'm 
you know what I actually downloaded the temp edition rules as well but I haven't looked at them yet so I'm just going to take some notes on the things that I don't know and uh, look them up so SV what is SV question mark all right uh, wounds 10 yep leadership 6 plus why is it a plus okay um, I guess if you just roll higher than that that's fine OC now I did I I seen in a battle report this is something to do with occupying um, I'm not 100% sure on the rules around occupying things so let's look that one up as well OC question mark all right uh, now into the weapons so ranged weapons bile spurt level hits uh, level hits is <laughs> I'm assuming these are keywords which are kind of like generic rules across 40k because uh, I can see under that there's one with blast and uh, further down there's melter too so sorry I'm just writing this all down lethal hits question mark um, if any of you guys know what this is feel free to post in the comments as well blast question mark and Melter 2. Melter 2 question mark. Okay, so Bile Spurt, range 12 inches, uh, attacks 3, BS. Is that ballistic skill? Is that what, um, yeah, because I can see under melee weapons it's WS. So would you calculate your BS against their SV? Is that how uh, the accuracy rolls are calculated? Maybe. Uh, strength 5. That's, that seems strong. AP 0 and damage 1. Okay. So it's a short range multi-hit spurt. Gotcha. <laughs> now underneath that we've got Missile Launcher Frag and Missile Launcher Crack. Uh, what does that say? Before selecting targets for this weapon, select one of its profiles to make attacks with. Right, okay, so you choose one or the other in this instance, I'm assuming. 48 range! Wow! That's, uh, how long is the board? That Would that cover most of the board? That's awesome, 48, nice. Uh, so the frag, we've got d6 attacks. The crack is uh, one attack. Uh, both BS3, strength four, strength nine for the the crack one, and there's AP minus two on that. Plus D6 wounds. Wow. So you can either go D6 attacks or D6 wounds. Um, I'm just thinking of um, scenarios in my head where you use like either. Or of these and I'm guessing for the frag one that would be more against like bigger blobs of units of like weaker units where you just want to um, you know throw out as many attacks as you can assuming that most of your attacks will kill on one hit whereas the, the crack one uh, strength 9 AP minus 2 d6 damage I'm guessing that you'd shoot like uh, their bosses you know their uh, HQ units or like um, their tanks or bigger ones um, cool. Ah, um, and yeah, so that frag one is also blast, so I need to figure out what that is. Now, multi meter, sorry, no, multi melter, sorry, it's so small. I have a feeling these are uh, screenshots from that uh, live stream they had the other day. I did watch a little bit of it. It was, um, it was kind of hard to follow because, well, for one, I was like painting at the same time, so I wasn't really paying attention, but it was, uh, from the battle reports that I've been watching on YouTube, they're so engaging and, you know, they get close-ups of all the minis and they make it really easy to follow where this one was kind of just like a, a bird's eye view of the tabletop and they were just, it was just two guys playing a game. Um, but yeah, going back to this, multi-melter. So, 18 inch range, two attacks, three BS, three plus BS, nine strength. Okay, so this is strong as well. AP minus four and D6 damage. So this is another very strong one. Um, 
you just need to be a little bit closer for it. 18 inch still seems quite far because movement 10 inch, I think on one of the initial, oh sorry that's just my phone going off, um, the initial data sheets I saw for like the terminators and I think it was, there was like a caster in there, they were like movement range 4 and 5, so I know Death Guard um, uh, from what I've heard and seen tends to have lower movement range than uh, most other factions but having 18 inch range seems like it would be quite good especially if they're moving towards you at 5 or 6 that 48 is insane um, now when it comes to shooting so do I have to choose either the bio spurt one of the missile launcher options or the multimeter or do I get to do one of each if, if they're all in range and can I shoot multiple targets with each of them let me, let me know on that one okay then underneath that we've got the uh, the melee weapons which is the gnashing maw which also has level hits yeah I made a note of that four attacks WS three plus strength six AP minus one and damage one so four attacks at strength six minus one AP sounds pretty good I think that's a lot stronger than my plague marines but compared to what this guy can dish out at range um, I feel like melee would be like a, a last resort right you'd want to try keep him at range so you can dish out those missile launchers and multi melters um, oh, I'm just looking at the picture here and I can see that they uh, they made this guy's teeth all uh, like metallic color they look so cool kind of wishing I'd done that on mine <laughs> mine are like white they look they look cool I like it I, I won't change it okay um now abilities deadly demise one uh there's no description for that so let's write a note for that deadly demise I wonder if that's uh a noble I mean sorry a death guard rule or a like a common rule Faction, Noble's Gift, Aura, okay. Um, uh, I wonder if that's got to do with that toughness, minus the toughness, Aura. And then Tank Hunters. Each time a model in this unit makes a ranged attack, that targets a vehicle, uh, that targets a vehicle unit, add one to the wound roll. Oh, so this was like a anti-tank, anti-vehicle unit. Now when it says add one to the wound roll, that is because you roll to hit and then you roll to wound, it's not adding to damage, right? Yeah, wound and damage is different, yeah, yeah, gotcha. And then there's invulnerable save 5 plus. So does that mean if someone was shooting me, they would first do a roll to hit, then a roll to wound, and then I would try save. Does that mean I always have a one in three chance of not taking any damage? That's this guy sounds really good. Um, and then we've got keywords: vehicle, chaos, noble, demon, smoke. I wonder what smoke is. <laughs> Let's write that one down too. Smoke. Um, mephitic light haulers. Okay. Now there is a second card behind this and I don't know if there's any text, um, I'll grab my mouse so you guys can kind of see where I'm looking at. I don't know if there's meant to be anything here, this is just a, a screenshot that I found on Reddit so let me know if there's anything behind here that, I, that I'm missing. Um, but it says unit composition 1 to 3 mephitic blight haulers. Bright haulers? Is that a typo? <laughs> I think it's a typo. <laughs> mephitic blight haulers. I do so much proofreading at work, like this kind of stuff just stands out to me straight away. Anyway, uh, every model is equipped with Biospur, Missile Launcher, Multimeter, and National. Right, so they come with all those weapons. But, yeah, so still unsure as to if, whether I can use all of them in one turn. That would be so cool if you can. Nice, okay, cool. So it sounds like. Um, this is a really good unit and I have a kind of anti-tank, anti, -tank, anti uh, 
hero, oh, I keep saying hero, anti-HQ kind of uh, pick in my army now, which is awesome. And I've got my plague bearers uh, who kind of make up the infantry squad. I'm kind of thinking of like what I should pick up next. Um, maybe I need a little bit of muscle. I have been eyeing up some terminators. And also I do really like the thought of having uh, uh, transport options. Uh, I know the uh, the Rhino you can load up uh, I did see on a data sheet somewhere you can load up uh, 12 infantry units or something like that so you know I just imagine having like this Rhino full of Plague Marines and just because their, their movement range is a whole lot further than the the Plague Marines right so just getting them in there uh, quick and early unloading them sounds like a good plan hmm. but anyway yeah so um, I've, Hey, if you made it this far into the video, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I will um, go away and do some homework on these terms that I don't know. It's, it seems to be a really exciting time to be getting into this hobby and learning the rules with like everyone else. So really excited to, you know, get to know my units and eventually uh, get them on, on a tabletop and start playing some games. So yeah, um, super excited. But hey, um, thank you again for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day and uh, I hope to see you guys again sometime soon. See ya.